51-year-old Abraham Cervantes was recently indicted for his role in a massive corporate fraud scheme involving a $4 billion U.S. company. But before we get into the details of that, I'd like to introduce you to somebody. This is Charlie Aluto. Charles A. Aluto is the former president and chief executive officer of Stericycle Inc. Apparently, he's now on the advisory council for the School of Business at Providence College. We'll get back to Mr. Aluto in a moment after we discuss Stericycle. Now, this is an article from Compliance Week from April 20th, 2022, and it says Stericycle is to pay $84 million to resolve FCPA violations. FCPA is the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. So basically, to make a long story short, this bribery scheme involved Stericycle going down into Latin American countries, including Mexico, Argentina, and Brazil. And bribing government officials there in order to get contracts with those governments that would be beneficial to Stericycle. So back in 2022, they entered into what was called a deferred prosecution agreement with the federal government. This is a copy of that deferred prosecution agreement. What a deferred prosecution agreement is, is it's an agreement between a government entity and an, either an individual or a company that basically says, we admit it, we did it, but don't prosecute us. And in exchange for not prosecuting us, we will agree to these conditions. So this deferred prosecution agreement has several conditions uh, tied to it. Now, one of those conditions is, of course, the payment of the $84 million, but there's other conditions as well. Uh, those conditions include uh, admitting that the company engaged in wrongdoing. So the, it says the company admits that it is responsible under U.S. law for the acts of its officers, directors, employees, and agents as charged in the information and as set forth in the attached statement of facts and that the allegations described in the information and the facts described in the attached statement of facts are true and accurate. So essentially, the company is admitting to everything that the federal government has already said about it with respect to these uh, to the fraudulent practices that it was engaged in. Now, in addition to agreeing to all that and to paying the $84 million, the company also has certain cooperation and disclosure requirements. So the company shall cooperate fully with the fraud section in any and all matters relating to the conduct described in this agreement and the attached statement of facts and other conduct under investigation by the fraud section. More specifically, the company agrees that its cooperation pursuant to this paragraph shall include but not be limited to the following. The company shall timely and truthfully disclose all factual information with respect to its activities and those of its present and former directors, officers, employees, agents, and consultants about which the company has any knowledge or about which the fraud section may inquire. So essentially, they have to cooperate with the federal government with respect to any information they have that might pertain to this, the, these allegations of fraud that the federal government has lodged against it and the fraud that they committed that they admitted to committing. Most importantly, it says that this agreement does not provide any protection against prosecution of any individuals regardless of their of their affiliation with the company. So in this subparagraph, the federal government is essentially forcing sterile to agree that even though sterile may not be prosecuted under this agreement, the directors, the officers, the employees, everybody else is fair game. The federal government can come after anybody with respect to the bribery that Sterling was condoning, apparently. So what about the statement of facts? What exactly is it that uh, Sterling agreed that they were doing? So this is the statement of facts that was attached to the deferred prosecution agreement. And essentially, it kind of sums up what the, what the company was doing. It says, from in or about and between at least... 
2011 and 2016, Stericycle, through certain of its employees and agents, knowingly and willfully conspired and agreed with others to corruptly offer and pay approximately $10.5 million in bribes to and for the benefit of foreign officials in Brazil, Mexico, and Argentina in order to obtain and retain business and other advantages for and on behalf of Stericycle. Stericycle earned approximately $21.5 million in profits from the corrupt scheme and through its corruptly obtained and retained government contracts. So essentially what the what they have uh, uh, agreed to here in the statement of facts is that not only did they pay $10.5 million in bribes between 2011 and 2016, but those bribes paid off. The statement of facts doesn't even get into the amount of revenue that Stericycle earned based off of these fraudulently obtained government contracts. All it refers to is profit. And it says that they profited $21.5 million based off of these ill-gotten government contracts. So. What about this Abraham Cervantes guy? Well, according to the federal government, this is from the uh, U.S. Department of Justice. They issued a press release saying that the former finance director is charged for his role in a $10 million foreign bribery scheme. According to court documents between 2011 and 2016, Abraham Cigaroa Cervantes, 51 of Mexico and others, allegedly caused hundreds of bribe payments to be made to government officials in Brazil, Mexico and Argentina to obtain and retain business and to secure improper advantages for Stericycle, a U.S. securities issuer in connection with providing waste management services. So. It also goes on to say that to conceal the corrupt payments, Cigaroa's, Cigaroa and others allegedly maintained false books, records, and accounts that did not accurately and fairly reflect the transactions and dispositions of Stericycle's assets, causing Stericycle to falsely record bribe payments as legitimate expenses in its consolidated books, records, and accounts. So... The $10.5 million in bribes, some of those were kind of negotiated by this Cigaroa guy. Now, Cigaroa is a Mexican citizen who was in South Florida and was able to be served in this, uh, to serve the paperwork for this indictment based on this indictment. And um, he was the one that was down there acting on Stericycle's behalf. And he was doing the bribing, right? And then he was kind of cooking the books too because when you have $10.5 million exiting a company, you have to account for it. So to account for it, he was he and his co-conspirators were kind of uh, using code words in the contracts for the companies so that they could hide the bribe payments within the contracts. So they would pay the companies for uh, certain certain aspects of the contracts. And then the, the, the countries would come back and pay them. But within those payments to the com countries were bribes. Now, I think we're supposed to believe based on all of this, that none of the higher ups at Stericycle had any idea what was going on. Now, I find that a little hard to believe. Why do I find that hard to believe? Well, if you are, let's say, the president and CEO of a company, and that company is doing gangbusters in a brand new market. 
and nobody within your executive board or your your executive cabinet is checking behind the accounting or any of the practices of this new market that you have, well, then you're still responsible because you should have known. This went on from 2011 to 2016. And you can't convince me that nobody upstairs knew what was going on. So let's talk about these people upstairs. One of them in particular. This is the Halifax group on their about us page. It says that they collaborate, have been collaborating with great teams for over 20 years. The Halifax group is a private investment firm dedicated to partnering with founders and managers of lower middle market businesses with total enterprise values, generally between 50 million and $300 million. So they're an investment firm. People and entities give them money and trust them to invest this money. Why do they do it? Well, because their values. Their values say we are committed to ethical and compassionate business practices, aligning the interests of all stakeholders. They're ethical and they're compassionate. So let's have a look at their team, shall we? Their team includes experienced and approachable partners. Among them, first on the list is one Charlie A. Aludo, operating executive. Let's find out a little bit more about Charlie. Now, Halifax formally engaged Charlie as operating executive in October 2021. He's a customer-centric and proven global senior business executive and former CEO and president of a $3.6 billion global company. It goes on. Most recently, Charlie was president and CEO of Stericycle Inc. Charlie led significant revenue growth through new service offerings. That was between 2013 and 2019. Now, according to the federal government and to Stericycle, this bribery scheme went on from 2011 until 2016. Four of those years, Charlie was president and CEO. These new service offerings created revenue, expanded revenue to the from $1.9 billion to $3.6 billion for a total increase of $1.7 billion. So the Halifax Group and, and Charlie are trying to convince people to invest with them because they're ethical and they're good at what they do. And as evidence of how good they are at what they do, they're touting Charlie's experience having taken a company from $1.9 billion in revenue and expanded that revenue by $1.7 billion. So let's have a look at Stericycle Stericycle, according to Google Finance, is stock is trading at $52.39. And in the fourth quarter of 2023, they had a net profit margin of 2.29%. They had revenue of $652 million and net income of $14.9 million, which gets us to that 2.29% number. So now we're going to do a little math. Let's assume without deciding that the profit margin remained the same has remained the same since Charlie was, was president and CEO. Now, according to the statement of facts that Stericycle agreed to, they made $21.5 million in what? In profit based on these bribes, based on these ill-gotten contracts. So let's start with that number, 21 Point five million dollars in profit and let's divide that by the 2.29 percent and see how much revenue stericycle got 
during that time based on those contracts and we get to a total of 938 million eight hundred sixty four thousand six hundred twenty eight dollars nine hundred forty million dollars in revenue from those contracts and mr aludo is telling us that he took the company from 1.9 billion to 3.6 billion for a difference of 1.7 billion 940 million of which was ill-gotten gains so why have we indicted a Mexican citizen for his role in this conspiracy? And this is the second one we've indicted. The second person that has been indicted based on this whole thing. And both of them are Mexican citizens. We've indicted them. But Mr. Aludo gets to tout that he increased revenue by $1.7 billion, even though $940 million of that was apparently ill-gotten gains. And he's making money off of having made money from ill-gotten gains. The stock that he took with him, because all of these CEOs have stock in the companies, the stock that he took with him likely gave him a golden parachute such that he doesn't need to make any more money. So he, he keeps that and then he gets to go out and make even more and gets to use the ill-gotten gains as evidence of his experience and his qualifications to encourage others to invest in his company. So my question is, why do we let this happen? Because this seems to keep happening. The CEOs and all the high level executives seem to get off scot-free and it's just the lowly, lowly uh, people, uh, the, the lowest people on the totem pole that seem to get indicted. If anyone gets indicted. Why do we allow this to happen? So what do you think should happen here? Because they should have all the information. Remember, Sarah Cycle has to give them all the information, give the Justice Department all the information they want. What do you think should happen here? Should Charlie have to face indictment like these other two people did? Should Charlie be able to go out and make money touting the ill-gotten gains of the company he was president and CEO of. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For now, this is The Legal Good.